one thing that sport re- sports really gave me was ability to accept the loss it's not just about winning a tournament or yes. winning a medal or winning everything it's also about uh getting better and yes. you get better when you accept something when you accept that a loss has happened uh, on court on ground wherever and that you have to work hard to win next time accept the loss hello viewers good morning ladies and gentlemen i am yet again with another warrior of life uh, who is uh, arjuna awardi who is uh, world number one badminton champion in para athletics who is uh, uh, won so many medals and uh, before i get into too many details let me just go back to uh, miss manasi joshi and manasi welcome to the show uh, will life like a warrior and warrior i call the people who definitely have overcome the serious challenges in their life and now they are living their dream life and they are the winner of their life of course they have put in a lot of effort so welcome to the show uh, manasi hello sir good morning thank you for having me on a beautiful sunday morning I'm enjoying our time in this conversation and uh, looking forward to have more such uh, interaction today yeah um, great i'm really excited thank you mansi thank you and we too are very excited today this sunday morning uh, mansi to start with uh, let me just know that or my viewers would like to know uh, that your little background that how uh, uh, i know that in a childhood you have been a good uh, uh, means passionate about the badminton playing another thing so little background of your childhood and your teenage life over to you sir uh, i was born in rajkot and i have lived my whole life in mumbai uh, i uh, my father was uh, employed at bhapa atomic research center as a scientist so we had a great opportunity of living in a colony a barc colony in anushakti nagar in mumbai and it was a great place to start and uh, we had great opportunity around us with badminton courts with multiple like big playgrounds in between four buildings and every place around us uh, had a very huge open space uh, our schools colleges and every every place inside the colony was very well equipped in terms of uh, not only sports but various other co curricular activities and a lot of influential people have uh, lived their life and have grown up in uh, anushakti nagar uh, with all the children who were sons and daughters of scientists i think uh, exposure to the field of science and technology was there right since the childhood and uh, my parents were like uh, you just don't have to be exposed to science and technology which we had great exposure to they were also like we want you our children to have exposure to all other activities uh, be it sports music arts and every other culture uh, also living in a society or a colony where people were there from multiple uh, cultures from all over india uh, the exposure that uh, uh, we all had in our colony was tremendous in terms of national uh, places um, and uh, which in turn gave us an opportunity to learn a lot of different languages and meet people from different cultures eat different food uh, and uh, during even my teenage years i had great exposure to a lot of activities uh, i was not only playing badminton but i was also playing football and uh, my teachers would encourage us not only to play one sport event but multiple sporting event be it uh athletics like 100 200 400 meters to long jump high jump mm-hmm. and uh, discus throw like all track and field events and other team events like uh, football volleyball basketball uh, which overall helped us to shape our personalities yes uh, as a i think my parents were very keen in us having participated in multiple competitions in schools be it uh, rangoli competition to elocution competition and i think uh, all these exposures and i have studied in uh, kendriya vidyalaya i think the exposure that i had uh, studying with my uh, to with fellow other fellow uh, students i think uh, i learned so much from my other students co students also and uh, 
then i enrolled into engineering because my love for science and technology was tremendous i did electronics engineering uh, from mumbai and uh, uh, i had developed keen interest in coding technology and later mm-hmm. on uh, in my uh, after graduation from my engineering college i started working in a software company in mumbai itself okay uh, i think uh, i uh, even in my engineering college we had exposure to badminton and i would as as a school student i would participate in various uh, school level competition intra school intra atomic energy uh, competitions and uh, local district level competitions uh, i would always uh, win one or the other medal in those competitions because i was a trained badminton player later uh, even in my engineering i would participate at multiple events uh, and when i started uh, working i would also participate at various uh, corporate level tournaments and so my love for sport was always there I, I... Uh, and uh, badminton was one sport that i loved playing it helped me shape my personality it helped me shape uh, give give me different views on discipline on hard work on uh, on time management and uh, how to be the best in all the fields i think yeah, absolutely absolutely mansi what you said is that sports gives you uh, this uh, how to manage the time and the hard work uh, and uh, 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 interaction with the people so uh, how important you think is the um, sports uh, uh, in shaping you as a leader how important you think I think I played multiple sports so it was not like I was playing just an individual sport but I was also le- playing a team sport in individual sport you are on your own and you have to be the best in your own area but in team sport you have to not only be best but you also have to consider the whole team so yes. I learned how to be a team player as well as a team uh, manager I still remember in my college I was uh, captain of my girls cricket team uh in my final year so i think uh, it helps you in uh, not only uh, understanding multiple other attributes of people and uh, harnessing the best quality that people have but also understanding the best quality that people have and then encouraging people when people are demotivated so i think sports gave me that kind of an attitude and one thing that sport re- sports really gave me was ability to accept the loss absolutely absolutely that is what the part of the leadership basically it means uh, how you take success and the failure uh, as a together it's and not it's, just about winning a tournament or yes. winning a medal or winning everything it's also about uh, getting better and yes. you get better when you accept something when you accept that a loss has happened uh, on court on ground wherever and that you have to work hard to win next time uh that is what helped me a lot uh, even in my later years when i had to go through a bigger one of my biggest flaws i think right. sports helped me in understanding that yes it's a loss yes it's okay and you can do better if you work yes. so i think that uh, that is one of the best quality that i've learned through sports absolutely absolutely and uh, what you said is uh, absolutely right uh, mansi that uh, Uh, you never uh, fail either either you succeed or you learn there are two things there is no failure in life it is you learn from those setbacks so mansi uh, i think after that uh, you had a, as you rightly mentioned that big loss of uh, life uh, in terms of uh, getting disabled uh, would you like to throw some light on that Uh, when i was working in my uh, when i within an organization in mumbai i was on my way to work this is around 11 years back in december 2011 oh. i uh, i was on my way to work and i met with an accident and uh, the accident was pretty huge and uh, it was so bad that uh, i was transferred from i i met with an accident at around 8:30 8:15 in the morning and uh, i was taken to one hospital from one hospital to uh, to the other and um, after 45 days of remaining in the hospital six surgeries out of which two were amputation surgeries uh, first one was to save my life and second one was again to uh, uh, to save other part of my body i think it was better to uh, i th- I, at that moment i really thought that it was better to live as a disabled person than to die 
and uh, since 2012 uh, i have been living as a disabled person and uh, it's not just uh, i mean over the years i've learned that it's not just disability but there are multiple things that are defining me and i i do not shy away from calling myself as a disabled person because i know it's there's nothing wrong in being disabled yes. it's just how the society treats you Absolutely. and uh, i think uh, since 2012 it's only because of the support that i've got from people around me my family friends my teachers my uh, colleagues uh, my doctors my nurses the housekeeping staff to prosthetist to everybody around me i think it's only because of their support that i've been able to do wonderful uh, my love for sport always remained with me and uh, the first question that i asked my doctor post my amputation was will i be able to play badminton and my doctor is like once if you want you can also climb mount everest there is <laughs> nothing stopping you you just do what you love to do and we will be there to support you so i think over the years i did not climb any mount everest that the doctor promised nor was my ambition but I love, I am climbing my own small, small events every day. Uh, sport is giving me an opportunity and I'm loving playing badminton. I have played now badminton at international level, won multiple. Uh, so, uh, Mansi, before we go uh, on that uh, uh, stories, uh, I just uh, wanted to highlight one point. Uh, I believe when you uh, met with the accident and you manage everything yourself in the sense that you call the people, you uh, told them that call the ambulance, means you were 100% calm and cool. And this is very important after meeting with the accident. You were, how you mustered that courage that despite your uh, getting under the wheel, uh, your leg uh, getting under the wheel and you remain calm, which is very important for the listener to understand that that this helps you in recovering fast as well as managing yourself. I think remaining calm helps you better make decisions. So when I met with an accident, I, I knew it's really bad, uh, but I was conscious. It, 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 I didn't have many of my head injuries or anything. The only way I could have lost consciousness was loss of blood. And I knew that I had very less time uh, till I lose blood. And I, I was an avid reader and, you know, encyclopedia. Uh, I would love to read all these documents. At that time, I understood that uh, as a child, I had understood that uh, you meet, if there is a huge blood flow, you have to remain calm. Otherwise, yeah. your heart starts pumping faster yeah. and uh, you may lose more blood. So I just, I used to tell myself, remain calm. You'll, be, you'll go through this, don't worry. And uh, there were a lot of bystanders because it's really, it's really crazy to see some uh, young girl on road who's met with an accident and people were there to support. Uh, I told one of the person who was standing beside me saying that, give me my phone and I would like to call my parents. I called up my fa father and told him I met with an accident, please come. Uh, at this spot. Uh, my, it was just like a five, seven minutes uh, ride for my father. It was going to, uh, it was supposed to be my grandmother's ear operation. And I was actually not going to go to work that day because of the operation uh, surgery of my grandmother. Uh, but unfortunately, at the last minute, the doctor called up and said that we are canceling. He had some other work and he had canceled surgeries for that day. And so I, I left for work. It was so unfortunate that I, within few, and my then grandfather was taking my grandmother to hospital. Uh, he just told my grandmother, okay, Mansi has met with an accident. You go home. I'm just going to this accident spot. I think my father was there. I think remaining calm helped me a lot. And then meeting, having people at the accident spot who knew me also helped me a lot. Uh, yeah. My father came immediately. My friend's father was also there. Uh, my sister's friend. I mean, people recognized me because the accident happened very close to the place I live. So people recognized me after I removed my helmet and the scarf that I was uh, wearing. And uh, I think remaining calm also helped me to control the blood flow, make Absolutely. proper decisions in calling my father, calling ambulance, 
of course i didn't call for ambulance but i asked bystanders to help me call an ambulance and uh, i was just waiting patiently for help to arrive and uh, um for me for people to take me to the hospital and uh, unfortunately transferring from one hospital to the another was really scary experience because i didn't know what's going to happen next and how things i mean i definitely knew that body my body was in trauma my mind was in trauma but then i had nothing to do rather than, and instead of panicking i told myself that it's better to remain calm absolutely the calm and the patience page you in long term and that is what you decided not to lose too much of blood because of so after that uh, how the life changed uh, mansi and how did you rehabilitate yourself and get into the again the main i think uh, when i met with an accident i had a great support of people around me but once i rejoined my organization once i start i came home once i uh, started a uh, healing i understood that everybody everything around me had moved on and i have to pick up my own pieces and do things that i love to do uh, it's not going to happen that people are going to wait for me my organization uh, as i was on long leave they had already filled my spot with someone else and uh, when i rejoined i had to relearn uh, new things in my organization and even before that i had to relearn how to balance myself work yes. again and uh, continue with my rehabilitation so uh, i there was a clinic a prosthetic clinic which was very nearby to the place that i stayed around 3 to 4 kilometers it's like extremely nearby and uh, i went there for my from prosthetic fitment uh, the clinic's name is autobock and it's my prosthetic provider currently i'm also uh, one of we have tied up together as uh, uh, they are my supporters and my sporting journey also um i learned how to balance i relearned how to do things again and i think uh, that has helped me to uh, to develop love for sports again badminton was a sport that i was playing and uh, i uh, again started playing it with my brother who was also a badminton player so uh, every sundays i would he we would book court and we would play together i would not move much but i enjoyed playing it and i didn't know that playing badminton helped me balance better find my uh, it helped me a lot actually playing badminton helped me a lot and uh, i i was out of my comfort zone when i was playing yeah, badminton absolutely. and uh, i didn't know the game that i had learned very early in my childhood which stayed with me during my uh, teens and in my early adulthood that game is going to stay with me and and later on become a career option for me i know i know. and uh, since 2000 and, uh, so i came back home in 2012 in january uh, around makar sankranti was the day i got discharged from the hospital uh, one of my favorite festivals and uh, okay and uh, i think uh, since 2012 i learned in within two years i did extremely well in my life in my sport in my career and i learned sport in 2014 i played my first national level tournament and since then i have been doing multiple things in my sporting uh, journey in fact uh, mansi uh, after going through so much of uh, physical challenge you need to have a lot of mental toughness isn't it then only one can come to this level where you are today number one badminton player so uh, would you like to share with my viewer that how important is to develop that mental toughness of a winner i think uh, everything is a matter of time uh, it's about uh, like any bad day that happens it it will remain for some time of course they, the bad days might turn Uh, uglier, but it will be only for some time. It will be there, like financial troubles, like anything, whatever you say, relationship troubles, uh, physical health, any troubles. They are there, but you have to work on it. It's not like आके चले गए. थोड़ा देर वेट करो तो चले जाएंगे. No, you have to work for for it, and you have to make sure that you are in the right direction. For that, head. you need a mental toughness. And for that, you just need to remember that it is a matter of time. Just yes. remain. it's like remain calm and think positive and uh, do 
work towards it like don't sit at home waiting Absolutely. things will change uh you have to make things change and for that yes. you have to uh, remain positive in your approach uh, always find uh, having bigger heart having bigger mind to accept and accepting is one of the best thing that i've learned again uh, it's not just through sports but through my injury also that acceptance is uh, in our hands when nothing else is in our hands acceptance to uh, accept a defeat acceptance to accept a uh, a loss of of anything i won't say uh, physically or mentally but it's there and you have to work towards it so i work to and taking first step it's all about taking the first step yes. so i started learning how to walk on crutches and now i then i learned how to walk on uh, how to climb stairs on crutches come down on crutches uh, and then walk on prosthetic and i think that helped me over the years that it's just one small step that you have to take uh, body has its own way of healing all you have to do is feed it feed it the right med right medication and body will heal it's awesome our human body is amazing the way it feels yeah, yeah. and then since uh, uh i have learned how to accept the loss i think uh, focusing my and channelizing my energy in what all i can do and not concentrating on what all things i can't yes i uh, i learned how to be a bold person in just uh, going out and doing multiple things and another thing that is required when things are low is having support not only from your family i won't say you need support of your family to be successful it can be your colleague it can be your sibling it can be a friend it can be a neighbor it can be a stranger it can be anyone but support is a must you cannot right. deal with things alone it requires a lot of people uh to help you in the in the hard times uh, and asking for help there is no, no nothing wrong um. in asking ki bhai uh thode time ke liye support to required rahega so you will have to be there so i okay. i knew that asking for help is easy so i started asking and within few days i didn't require any help so i think uh, वीकनेसेस so how uh, then you came into this uh, full flesh uh, playing the uh, para badminton and uh, then getting the medals after medals let's uh, hear that so uh, para badminton happened by uh, social media i yeah. was an avid social media user uh, this is 2000 i mean i think since social media has been invented facebook or kurt i have been i think it has been invented for our generation first i know <laughs> and we as children uh, like i have used almost all the social media early on from right from when i was in my 11th standard and uh, when facebook came i was one of the first few people to open my facebook account when instagram came i was one of the first few people in my look in my community i'm talking about yeah, yeah. first a few uh, instagram or first few twitter and i've been on these social media platforms since since quite a long time in 2011 uh, when i played my first corporate level tournament uh, after joining my organization i had won so in 2012 again after my injury my corporate was very keen in me having uh, taking part in that tournament uh, the people and everybody knew that one of the employee has met with such a life changing injury so a lot of people helped me that you should participate and uh, one of the organizers said that hey mansi we have no idea we have no clue about badminton organization and we require your support don't play uh, just come if you don't want to play don't play but we need your support in organizing and uh, handling tournament uh, and i was like yes i'd lo love to be a part of it i i had uh, I, i and he said that bring your badminton racket uh, when you get time you can play also so i uh, took my brother and sister with me to the badminton court there 
uh, and uh, we organized that tournament and in it, and because it was lovely uh, to be a part of it i started playing and in that tournament when i played i started defeating everybody and this was just when i was learning how to walk i was also defeating a lot of other people in badminton and since then i developed a lot of courage to play the sport and in that tournament i won a gold medal oh uh everybody i mean i was i went crazy everybody around me went crazy and my organization went crazy that just few days few months back she was out she was in hospital and now within 8 months she's playing a tournament and not only playing but winning a medal uh i got a congrats i got a lot of congratulations from uh top uh, executives in my organization and it encouraged me a lot uh since then i've been participating in a lot of corporate level tournaments in and around mumbai and sharing my journey on my social media so one of my friend neeraj who was an amputee through the group said that why are you playing with able bodied people come and join para sports we have para badminton tournaments and uh, i uh, i felt really i thought can i play para badminton i'm not uh, i cannot like these people are marvelous i might not be there but uh, in 2014 i got invited to play national level tournament okay. and uh, in that tournament i won a silver medal i i lost to one of the legend in badminton parul didi okay. and uh, she was arjuna awardee at that time and when i thought that if i'm able to play and reach till silver level then all i have to do is work hard yeah, absolutely from 2014 to 2019 it took me multiple years to uh, first look at a champion uh, be with those champions like parul parmar and then in 2019 got an opportunity to defeat those people like defeat her in a, in a tournament i think oh. i did it. um i uh, i played one of the best badminton i learned so much i played a lot of international tournaments since 2015 uh in 2015 i won a silver medal at world championships in england in yes. uh, 2016 i won a bronze medal in asian championship in china uh 2017 world championship bronze and in 2018 i won asian games bronze medal and yeah. there are multiple other medals that i have won uh, these are just the major medals i'm talking about and in 2019 i won my very first uh, world championship gold medal and number one thank you mm-hmm. and 2019 uh, the two, i have been training at gopichand academy in hyderabad since 2018 now and uh, pursuing badminton uh, for the love of sport uh, in i left my job in 2016 to pursue sports at that time i decided that i want to see how i much how much i can push my body and how much how much important are skills in the field of sports and movement and everything else i were had one of the highest disability in my event in singles and i want just wanted to see how much i can do better and uh, over the years i think i've done really well in my field of badminton i've become one of the best and right now i am world number 1 in singles and uh, i've paired up with uh, another young athlete called named rutik and we are now ranked number 1 in mixed doubles as of today oh, so uh, uh, we have been doing extremely like i have been doing extremely well in the field of uh, badminton and i have also started using my voice as a disabled person to change the narrative and perception around disability yes yes folks yes. and uh, i've been speaking a lot on uh, multiple uh, channels multi- I, by channels i mean uh, social media and print and digital media uh, just sharing my story and telling the world how difficult and how easy it is to live with as a person with disability and uh, talking more on how to change the how to change mindset how to have more road safety and in general just talk about uh, issues pertaining to people with disability and i think uh, it has made me more the sport has made me more responsible in talking Absolutely. about issues and uh, i've got some good recognitions from multiple uh, 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 multiple uh, media houses and uh, channels uh, for my contribution to the field of sports i i know that reminds me uh, you have been uh, cover page of uh, time magazine and vogue uh, and your femina and even ali 
So uh, that is too creditable. Uh, just tell how it happened, all these things. Uh, this is also... I also have a Barbie doll modeled after... I know, my, I know, uh, I know. <laughs> my uh, likeness. And I think that, it's great. That, to that, have... that, that uh, exactly looked like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, uh, a lot of uh, good achieve, good recognitions have happened over the years yeah. in the field of, uh, uh, because of the field of sports. Um, Time magazine has ne- named me as one of the next generation leaders. And uh, may I... So how, how this uh, Time magazine thing happened and how did your parents feel in that time? Uh, so Time Magazine reporter approached me that I, this is around 2020, beginning of uh, 20, no, sorry, mid mid of 2020 when the whole world was down with COVID. Uh, I was doing a lot of work since 2019. I've been very vocal about my ideologies around uh, disability and sports and importance of change in narrative. And I've been speaking about it on a lot of platforms. I don't know how they found out about this. Time Magazine reporter contacted me saying that uh, we Time Magazine has decided you as one of their next generation leaders. So yeah. now Time Magazine comes up with Time 100 most influential people. Like right. now they also come up with uh, next generational leaders who are youngsters who are changing, uh, according to them, are changing the world. And they thought I was worthy enough to uh, uh, be called that and I was so inspired to be in the list which includes multiple people from the field of art, music, science and technology. Even Shooter, Shooter Dadi. Shooter Dadi, that was in, uh, that's not Time, that is BBC. Oh, BBC, yes. 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 So Time magazine is only for young uh, uh, people under, I I don't know the age age in which they have it but I think I was very fortunate to be a, uh, in uh, as next generational leader and uh, the photo that they took uh, made it to the cover in Asia, the whole of Asia. Right. And I had my friends from multiple countries, from Hong Kong to Singapore to, uh, to China sharing that they have seen me uh, on Time Magazine in their own countries. Uh, then uh, Barbie came up with uh, a doll uh, both of them uh, release happened around the same time within two days uh, then uh, BBC has named me as uh, women 100 women of 2020 yes uh, women Forbes leaders named, yeah Forbes has named me as uh, so 100 women of 2020 had 100 women women from multiple countries there were four from India I was lucky to be one among those yeah, uh, yeah. four or five uh, then Forbes has named me a self-made woman of 2020. And I think uh, I have had great recognitions from multiple these kind of channels. BBC also named me, uh, nominated me as, as athlete of the year. Uh, I was the first para-athlete to be a part of athlete of the year, which included Sindhu, Duti Chand and other able-bodied sports person. So to get, oh, yeah. get a recognition in these athletes, I think uh, it was one of the biggest achievement. Uh, and basically, I, uh, Mansi, what I say, this is this is not a uh, disability. It's basically, you guys are differently abled people. You are the most abled people, in fact, I must say that, uh, who has converted their disability into their most ability. And that is why you are there on uh, these cover pages. It's not, it's a very hard earned. Nobody, I, according to me, nobody is different. It's uh, unfortunate that life throws a lot of different kind of uh, challenges. Yeah. But uh, also, uh, it's important that we do not just think that it's because of they have different ability, they'll be able yeah. to uh, change or they'll be able to navigate. The reality is very different. We still live in a world where the in our country, things are not accessible. Tomorrow, if I am on my wheelchair, I want to go out. I have multiple injuries since I've started playing badminton and I sometimes I'm stuck to wheelchair. Uh, for my uh, locomotion and uh, it's crazy that if I'm on my wheelchair I still cannot access uh, the basic sabzi wala to uh, mm. to ATMs to uh, I just have to be on in a in an Uber yeah Ola and uh, not get the beauty 
of public transport. So I think it's not just different ability. I think uh, uh, life throws us with different challenges and it, life becomes easier if uh, people around us are more acceptable to changes Absolutely. around us. Uh, and uh, the infrastructure accommodates to everybody's needs because according to me, the change in infrastructure won't only help and it's not only according to me, actually. The change in infrastructure does not only help uh, a disabled person, but everybody in the society, right? From a woman who, who is having the baby in their small uh, uh, tram to uh, a, an old uncle and auntie who are currently uh, on a wheelchair. Uh, it helps everybody in the society. And I think uh, we all need access. In well, fact, uh, 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 you are working toward that also, sensitizing the masses about the disabled, disability and disabled people. Got it. So uh, what, uh, what work you are doing toward that? How are you helping? I'm encouraging a lot of people to join sports, uh, encouraging more and more people to uh, have opportunity of and love for sports. Uh, I'm also... Uh, visiting a lot of people who have met with an accident and encouraging them. And this is just a personal thing where I'm helping other people in procuring uh, the equipments and devices. Uh, okay. But I'm also talking about uh, issues that we face on our social, on my social channels and on my, uh, on people who are, who ask for opinions, who I have been uh, talking about issues. I talk about inclusion. I talk about, uh, in schools, I go and I talk on road safety, encourage people to be more vigilant when they are driving. I uh, help in uh, speaking, I speak at multiple corporates in schools and colleges around disability, inclusion, and uh, need for inclusion, accessibility, and change in mindset, especially in a country like ours. Yeah, mindset is the most important thing which needs to be changed toward the disability and the disabled people. Of course, the infrastructure is another important thing. So, Manasi, uh, after having got so much of recognition uh, worldwide, uh, plus uh, being the number one uh, badminton player, uh, para badminton, what next? I think I have played a lot of tournaments. Uh, now I'm aiming for Paralympics. That okay. is the tournament that is left from the things I need to do. 2024 is going to be Paralympics for us. Uh, Olympics and Paralympics are happening in Paris. And uh, I it's my ambition to play that sport, to the, play, the sport that I love. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's my ambition to play it in Paris and uh, win a medal. And uh, yeah, I mean, I want to be one of the contributor to a medal tally uh, for the country. And uh, not only that, I want to work towards, uh, uh, I want to use my voice as a disabled person, as an athlete with, uh, uh, who's playing para sports, as an athlete with disability. I want to uh, keep on uh, using my voice to raise, to change. And okay. So, uh, Jati Jati, uh, what message would you like to give to our youths? I think uh, what I'd like to share today with all everyone is some things do not happen as we plan, but yes. we, we should learn how to navigate and uh, use our current uh, anything into development of our own self, uh, having self-awareness, accepting things and uh, uh, learning your weakness, making them your strength is very much possible it's in our hands and it's really important to uh, have a positive attitude and a mindset because yes. it helps you navigate or jo log uh, badminton player banna chahte hain unke liye koi tips every day court mein pahunchiye time pe <laughs> okay khub mehnat kijiye और स्पॉन्सरशिप्स और वो सारी डील्स आप उसके लिए आप लिखिए लोगों को आप अपने अपने नियर बाय मंत्री को लिखिए मंत्री से लेकर कॉर्पोरेट्स कंपनी सबको लिखिए 
मुझे पता है कि गेम अपने हाथ में है बट द फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट दैट वी रिक्वायर समटाइम्स वी डू नॉट हैव एक्सेस टू इट बट देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू गेट दैट काइंड ऑफ एन एक्सेस टू अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड दैट बैडमिंटन अगर खेल रहे हैं तो मैं श्योर हूँ कि आप इतना पसंद करते हैं कि आप छोड़ेंगे नहीं मैंने अभी तक नहीं छोड़ा है uh, और uh, मैं उम्मीद करती हूँ कि स्पोर्ट एज अ वे ऑफ लाइफ आप yes. कीजिए और uh, बस आगे बढ़ते रहिए मानसी इट हैज बीन अ लॉट ऑफ लर्निंग टू माय व्यूअर्स लिसनिंग दिस डिस्कशन एंड वी ऑन माय बिहाफ वी विश यू दैट इन द नेक्स्ट कमिंग पैरालिंपिक यू डेफिनेटली कम विद द हाईएस्ट मेडल पॉसिबल एंड वी विश यू विद ऑल द विशेस सो दैट यू कीप योर सेल्फ फिट मोटिवेटेड इंस्पायर्ड to play the next year paralympic and we wanted to see you with the flying colors so thank you so much me and on my behalf my viewers thank you sir and thank you to all to those who have tuned in and uh, request you all to support uh, me in my journey towards paralympics and uh, check what's happening so thank you sir for yeah. having me today on your uh, show and it was such a fun time discussing and talking